Live from WWL-TV, this is the Eyewitness News at 10. Preparations are underway in Times Square tonight for the nation's biggest New Year's Eve celebration. But New Orleans knows how to party too, and city officials say they are ready. Good evening to you. I'm Paul Dudley. Sharice and Katie have the night off. We may not see the same size crowd as New York City, but New Orleans officials say they are all set for whatever may come their way. Erica Ferrando has more. And ahead of New Year's Eve, the New Orleans Fire Department is also reminding everyone that unpermitted bonfires are illegal. And to help bring in the new year, the city will hold two fireworks displays this year. The first will be at Joe Brown Park at 830. Then the traditional French Quarter display is at midnight. That's along the riverfront. And the city reminds you that it is illegal to light fireworks or shoot guns into the air. And somewhere that's going to be very busy on New Year's Eve, Bourbon Street. As we take a live look outside, weather looks pretty good out there. So what's going to be on tap for tomorrow, your New Year's Eve? Well, your local weather expert, Chris Franklin, is joining us with the answer to that question. Chris, going to be pretty good, pretty clear, right? Yes, clear and cold. Thanks, Chris. The new year could bring a new look and use for an old eyesore in New Orleans East. Thousands of us drive past the vacant hotel at Chef and I-10 every day. But as Danny Monteverdi reports, you could see lots of changes in the coming months. And in addition to the rooms, there will be ground floor retail space. Once work begins, it'll take about a year to finish. New Orleans East and its struggles were the focus of our recent series, The Forgotten East. You can find a link to that story at our website right now, WWLTV.com. Well, a cyber attack on New Orleans more than two weeks ago is now affecting those trying to pay property taxes. Today, Councilmember Joe Geruso tweeted that property taxes cannot be made online. You must pay by mail or in person inside City Hall. That's 1300 Perito Street. We know that this is uh, due to the ongoing problems from the December 13th cyber attack. Payments are due January 31st at 5 p.m. Well, some Gretna families are still waiting for their Christmas cards and packages to be delivered. Neighbors in the McDonoughville neighborhood tell us that they haven't received their mail in at least 10 days. They say mail delivery has been a chronic problem and not just during the holidays. According to Gretna Mayor Belinda Constant, mail delivery is so bad that the city is actually having difficulty getting water bills to residents. Neighbors, meantime, feel like they are fighting a losing battle to get the mail. We're not receiving Christmas cards. Mayor Constant is expected to meet with Gretna's postmaster later this week to discuss the delivery delays. Two attacks on people practicing their faith this weekend. First at a church in Texas. One shot was all it took to stop the gunman who opened fire. We are learning more about the man who ended the attack within seconds of its starting. It turns out that that man had trained other parishioners on how to shoot just in case there was ever a scenario like the one that played out yesterday. Within seconds of the gunman opening fire in the church filled with 240 people, Jack Wilson pulled out his own gun and fired a single shot killing the gunman. Texas state law allows weapons in places of worship. And on Saturday during a Hanukkah party at a rabbi's home in New York, multiple people were stabbed and today the accused attacker Thomas Grafton faces five charges of hate crimes one for each of the alleged stabbing victims. Prosecutors say the evidence found in the suspect's home and car included handwritten anti-Semitic journals and internet searches. All the people from the... All of the victims survived, but one of the five victims is still listed in critical condition with a head injury. Well, federal investigators are trying to find more people who saw a deadly plane crash in Lafayette on Saturday. Officials spoke about this this afternoon, and they're trying to piece together actually what caused the crash that killed five people. The full investigation could take up to 18 months to complete. Officials say the plane's equipment was badly damaged, and they don't believe it had a flight data recorder. They also said that there was no distress call made before the crash, but air traffic control had just issued a low altitude warning to the plane. So, yeah. Again, five people were killed in that crash, including sports reporter Carly McCord. Another is in critical condition. A service is being planned for McCord in Baton Rouge on Saturday. You can donate to a scholarship fund in lieu of flowers. In anticipation of the new year and a new decade, we've been gathering up the stories that impacted us most. We'll have a look at those coming up. Plus, we'll have a full look at your forecast if you plan on going out to ring in the new year. Stay tuned. 
As we near the end of 2019, we're taking a look back at the biggest stories, but not just of the year, of the decade. Tonight, we're turning our attention to weather. Here's Chief Meteorologist Chris Franklin. I have certainly seen a lot of flooding in the last two yeah. years I've been here, but not yeah. snow yet. I'm still waiting to see no, we, snow. Have, we didn't have it this year. Yeah. Well, so far, it's yeah, only, it's only right. a few days into winter. Yeah. Winter only started at No snow 26. on New Year's Eve, though. No snow nice. and no fog. No. That is the very latest live in the French Quarter. Back to you. I hear that you guys are popping some <laughs> champagne. You better save me some. Ready? Look, Ready? We, got, we got a glass for you, Paul. Good evening, everyone. I'm Karen Swenson. And I'm Paul Dudley in for Katie Moore. It is always a good Monday when we're coming off a Saints win. And Karen, now we're looking forward to the playoffs. Indeed. The Saints will open their playoff run at home against the Vikings on Sunday at noon. And believe it or not, another <laughs> controversial pass interference call hurt the Saints this weekend. Sports director Doug Mouton joins us with that story. Well, from the ACs to the heaters, it has been a drastic change. It's a roller coaster, right? The colder weather came in overnight. Your local weather expert, Chief Meteorologist Chris Franklin, is here to tell us if this weather is going to be sticking around through the new year. Chris? The colder weather brings a higher risk for fires, and unfortunately, some of those can be deadly. That was the case in Lafouche Parish over the weekend. Last night, the Chack Bay Fire Department arrived to find flames coming from the back of a house on Highway 307. They later found the body of a man inside. The cause of that fire is still under investigation. That was the ninth fire fatality in Louisiana in just the past few weeks. All of the others were in the northern part of the state. It's actually led the state fire marshal's office to make a plea to Louisiana families to take home fire safety seriously. He's asking you to look around at your homes and the homes of elderly relatives and neighbors to keep an eye out for potential fire hazards such as heating devices close to combustibles and make sure you do not overload electronic power sources. All right, the Saints dominated over the Panthers yesterday on the road, winning 42 to 10. That's right, but Saints fans were paying close attention to a couple other games yesterday to see where the Saints will sit in the playoffs. Sports director Doug Mouton joins us now to tell us who we should, should root for and how it all plays yeah, out. Well, it's kind of done. Yes, <laughs> great for the Saints. Sports, Paul Dudley. Thank you, Doug Mouton. I'm here with Chris Franklin. We're talking about two more days before the decade is over, and lots of people are hoping to enjoy the New Year's Eve out on the town. So, Chris, how enjoyable is it going to be? Well, it'll be nice because we won't have fog, and if you were hoping for that more December, January chill, it's back, and it's going to be with us as we ring in the I New Year. I think I just want it to be a little bit more consistent. It's so up and it down. It is, and that's just kind of how we spend every winter here. Isn't that it's true? Just the 